Matthew Williams um, Joyride trainer that came out as the part of the second collection with Nike. A bit more detail regarding it because I remember I mentioned previously regarding the whole collection just as a whole. But I think the shoe itself is very interesting. Um, this is the uh, Hype Beast. Um, I quite like the upper. It says here, yeah, close look at the Matthew M. Williams uh, Joyride CC3 setter. I wonder why he just why he calls himself Matthew M. Williams. Probably because he doesn't want to just be Matthew Williams because it's a bit boring. But the Matthew M. Williams is a bit unnecessary, isn't it? But it's like Stephen A. Smith. Like, come on. But hey, what can you do? The shoe itself is beautiful. So it's a Joyride CC3 setter, right? The text is the following. With Matthew Williams and Nike um, series. Oh, it's the third collection. It's not the second, the third. Okay, my bad. So I guess the first was what we saw on the runway. The first Paris runway show, right? And then the second was the camo. Or was the second the camo on the runway? I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So with the Matthew Williams and Nike series uh, free collection set to arrive on December the 5th. We take a closer look at the footwear releasing alongside the soft goods. Named uh, the Joyride CC Frets CC Setter, each pair takes Nike's multi TP bed filled running silhouette and blends it with the tech uh, wear inspired uh, aesthetic. Williams has trans this demonstrated via his label 1017 Alix Alix um, 9SM, which is a which is a which is a play on the whole. Um, Gucci main right 1017 right I'm pretty sure um, from the images we can now get a better look at the sneaker stuffly mesh upper synthetic overlays asymmetrical laser system and the burrito tongue available in the choice of black white a uh, black uh, black or wolf gray each pair is equipped with a uh, react midsole icy blue translucent joyride cushioning the Matthew and William joyride setter is currently up on raffle end for 179 69 dollars pounds sorry oh it's a lot of money in it really for those isn't it bloody hell um but i quite like them man they're sort of like a mid shoe i like that kind of mid length shoe which is maybe similar to a lot of the kind of nice booty J japanese inspired collaborations you might get nowadays i quite like the translucent soles a big win triple black upper you know i'm always gonna be a big fan of those um the tongue is a little bit in there's no tongue on it right so it's kind of like um it's the same sort of like lacing system you maybe get on the footscape so it looks quite cool but i like them in general i really like them got some lace hoops there on the top so these are probably um framed around running right or cross training that's probably why they've got them there so if you went maybe went on the nike side they probably might be underneath cross training which would be interesting to wear them as a as an actual trainer as a gym shoe right i'm not too sure if i'll be a fan of those that way but i like them man i think they look really cool um again nice translucent sole black upper maybe the wolf gray is probably the standout color of them but i think they fit his collection really well and again a really interesting take on the shoe i think again with these collaborations we don't we don't really give these brands much props for it but i think especially if you look back at maybe it was the the time the era that we were in or we were in back in the day but i remember you know being on crooked tongues and stuff and just you know being annoyed that every retro that they basically put out was essentially you know um ruined by a collaboration that probably didn't need to exist or the collaborations came around and all they did was change the colorway nowadays brands are really taking a chance because you know especially with a captive audience you have nowadays with kids who just want the most hypey sneaker mode out at the moment air force one jordan one um yeezy whatever it may be it'll be really easy for a brand to just come out and just you know do a air max one uh collab and just change the colorways and get that sell out so for them to kind of go into the archives dig a dig a shoe out from the vault that they actually like that they actually want to wear and then have the risk that it might end up on the sales rack is a really big um it's something that i give a lot of props to and i think a lot more people need to give a lot more respect to that in that regard because again it could easily be a complete dud end up on a sales rack in tk max but the fact that he went ahead and, and brought a shoe um as part of his collaboration that actually matches what he does in his main line is incredible and again it allows nike 2 to reintroduce a shoe maybe that they tried to put out didn't get any traction reintroduce it under the guise of it being an elite's collaboration and see if it works that way it doesn't seem to be any branding on the shoe to say that it's a leaks which is interesting i'm not sure if that's a purposeful done thing usually they try to have some kind of okay they've got his is it mm there mmw at the back of the hill in boss but there's nothing that says okay so matthew m williams and nike it's not a leaks and nike that's probably why um that that maybe explains it and again interesting pivot He's doing the same thing that Sammy Ross is doing and Virgil are doing where they're essentially Virgil does it with Off-White. Off-White is a kind of house that he kind of does his collaborations with, personal collaborations, Nike, Ikea and all those all that kind of likes and gallery stuff. Sammy Ross is doing the same thing. He's kind of pulled away. He's kind of leaves a cold war to be the brand or the kind of clothing company. And then himself, he does all these little personal projects and collaborations. And then I'm sure Matthew Williams is doing the same thing too. By having the MMW signage of his name and then having the personal collaboration being done that way too, which looks really interesting. 
and again allows him to kind of be a bit more playful maybe they take more risks um maybe that with that being said maybe the idea of this shoe wouldn't necessarily fit in with overall elite theme maybe it'll be something a little bit more um industrial looking maybe i don't know uh but yeah I, I quite like this i think it looks really really cool and again um matthew is actual an actual runner he actually does work out so that's cool to see as well it's not like it's just a shoe made for people that you know do instagram workouts such as someone actually goes and works out and lifts weights and cross trains and stuff so i'm sure they've done some wear tests with it to make sure it's kind of compatible to that kind of scene so that'll be cool to check out but again a really nice shoe interesting shoe great choice um i like the actual execution of it and i'm sure it will do well when it releases on the 5th of december so if you check it out available now at end launches i'm sure most of you know how to use that end launch site which is probably my favorite site of them all i tend not to do any anything else apart from anything raffles i'm not gonna repost anything i'm not gonna like an instagram post or retweet all that nonsense you can go jump off a bridge but if it's just entering a raffle entering your car deals and keeping it moving and waiting to see if you get selected i'm all game for it and by and large anyway most of the time the collaboration isn't the most hype thing you'll be able to get it on StockX, you know for you know you have to maybe pay 50 quid extra to get on StockX the next day which is you know again no hassle if you work full-time you know an idol you don't want to queue you can probably just do that but definitely check it out it's coming out of december the 5th price at 169 pounds alongside the whole other collection i'm pretty sure right or is it just the shoes coming up first i'm not too sure but definitely keep an eye on that um matthew m williams and nike uh joyride shoe 